Now that we've discussed how to collect our data with different types of random sampling and the important vocabulary needed for a study, we need to make sure we can identify the best practice to actually set up a statistical study. And that's what we're doing today with our introduction to experimental design. I'm going to recommend seven steps for a statistical study. These might vary from textbook to textbook, from statistician to statistician, but the idea behind the study is basically exactly the same. First, you need to identify what individuals you're interested in study. Who is your population? Once you've done that, you need to clearly specify the variables and the protocols you're going to take to get those measurements. What is your random sampling technique? How are you going to set up the study to make sure you avoid bias and cover all the potential extraneous variables? Then you need to address how you will exactly collect your data. I'm going to talk about a few of those in a minute. That's why there's a star there. Next, it's also important to address issues of ethics. Are there issues of privacy, confidentiality, or the way the study is going to be conducted? Is the study done in an ethical way that protects everyone involved? Finally, you're ready to start collecting your data. And once you collect your data, you can use the appropriate statistical methods to draw your conclusions. The rest of this course really focuses on number six, using the appropriate statistical methods to describe your sample and to make inferences about the entire population. And finally, to wrap up, you should note any concerns you might have about your data collection and also any recommendations that might come out of that for future studies to continue the research. Now, I mentioned number three, how you will collect the data. I want to address a couple different ways that you can collect data. First, you could collect data through a method called a census. A census means you're going to attempt to get measurements from the entire population. Everyone of interest is going to be included in this study. Contrast that with what's done more often is a sample. These are when we just take measurements from part of the population. It's easier to get a hold of, and if we can do it randomly, we can make some really good inferences about the general population with just a sample. Or you might be interested in doing a simulation. A simulation is an Im imitation of a real world situation. This can be done with a computer program or a mathematical model. For example, if I wanted to flip a coin one million times and see what the results are, it would take a long time to flip it a million times. But I could write a quick computer program that would simulate the flipping of a coin and give me the results of one million flips. That would be a simulation, an imitation of a real-world situation. Another way you can collect data is what's called an observational study. An observational study is when you take measurements without changing the response or the variables being measured. You're observing them in their natural environment. For example, if I'm doing a research study on dual enrollment students, I'm just going to observe the dual enrollment students compared with the traditional students as they naturally occur. Contrast this with an experiment, where an experiment, the treatment is deliberately imposed on certain individuals to observe a possible change in response. This is where a pharmaceutical company wants to know if a new drug is effective. So they give half the population a placebo, and half the population is deliberately given the new medication to see what possible change occurs in the response. That is an experiment where I'm forcing the change on my individual. Hopefully this brief introduction to best practices of setting up a statistical study has been helpful for you as you look at your experimental designs. I want to wish you luck as you continue your work in our statistics course.